Hello, today we're going to talk about one form and we're going to start coding it. And what we're doing is we're going to create the create observable function that we're going to need to be able to watch for changes on things without forcing updates through the context in React. If you've ever heard of something called Recoil.js, which is something made by an internal team at Facebook, it is a solution for the very problem that I'm also going to solve with create observable. I don't need anything as complex as Recoil. And honestly, I had like Recoil is not fully released as far as I know. So because of that, I'm just going to build this thing myself. It's going to be very simple. Create observable will return an object. The object will have two methods on it. It's going to have a publish method, which is a function, but I'm going to define it up above. I'm going to define it like right here. Cons publish uh, equals that. And it's also going to have a subscribe method. And this will return an unsubscribe when it does do it. So we know we have a subscribe and we know we will return from here with an unsubscribe, some kind of function that unsubscribes you. I, know, I got that much. That's pretty good. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's probably because I'm not using anything. I just don't have any code in here and that's why the linting rules are failing. Before we can do any of this, we need to first add a, an object here to maintain all of our, manage all of our subscribers because this has to know who's subscribed and who's not subscribed and whatever. Anytime somebody calls subscribe, we, we get a callback here. It'll give us a callback. And this callback is a subscriber, maybe? I don't know. That's not really like RxJS terminology, but I'm going to call it that. This is, maybe it is. You know what? Maybe it is. Uh, yeah, it is. This is our subscriber, and we're going to have a list of subscribers in an array. And we're going to be maintaining this list of subscribers based on ones coming in here. Now, I really don't want to mutate this, but I can't see a way around mutating it without doing a ref. So if I created this as a ref, then I can mutate it. And I guess I can because we're keeping with React the way it's written in React. So this would be current, right? And is equal to that. It starts, initializes as an array. Even though this is not a hook, this will not be a hook, but we can use it like it's a hook. Not we can use it, I'm sorry. We can define values in the way that you would understand them had you been using React. So now we can mutate it and it's just fine. When it updates subscribers.current, you would do this, you know? Equals, now we are mutating it, but we are mutating it to subscriberrefs.current.concat the subscriber. We're going to add the subscriber in to our object or our array here, and we'll create a new one every time, which may or may not be an issue. Performance wise, I just use push, but whatever. This is it's immutable. <laughs> and we're, when we return here, we want to remove the subscriber from the, from the array here. We need to know what the index is, and we should be able to know by getting the length of this minus one at the point in time after we've done that length minus one that that is, if we put all this together, that is going to be the, the location in the array. Now, that's not true, though, <laughs> because as the array length changes over time and other things unsubscribe, then it won't be there. And I could just leave a blank space in the array, but I really don't have to. You can remove things from the array. You just have to find their index first. I would find index of the subscriber method, and then I would take that index... We could even call it subscriber index. We can take that index and then we can remove it by basically doing so this thing. It looks bad with the subscriber ref and the not current part, but this is how we're going to have to do stuff in React too if we're mutating ref. We're going to have dot current everywhere and we will be mutating ref. You want to slice here from zero to the index and then you, you want to concat in the subscribers ref dot current sliced to the index plus one, which essentially says get rid of this item by getting the index of it and getting an array of zero to one minus that, and then everything past it. And that's a way you can essentially it's a slice or splice. Sorry, splice. That's what we've coded here. If you work with React, like you would or Redux, this kind of stuff would be more familiar. But with Redux, you can also create a duplicate and then splice it that way. It's not too crazy. This is a function which would unsubscribe you. And then once it's done, we are unsubscribed. We don't need to return anything, though. So it would, this is a, yeah, it's a side effect. I'm sorry. Unsubscribing would be a side effect, not in the typical sense. This Having this up here is like almost, these are closed over in scope. When we publish, what we're going to do is we're going to publish on the subscriber. But how do we know which subscriber? It is all of them. When you publish, you, you have the subscriber here and you're going to for each 
Because we're doing a side effect. If we're doing map, then we're obviously trying to save something. We're just doing a side effect here. We're going to take this value and we are going to publish it to every subscriber. Like that. And we're done. And I think that's create observable. Man, that was fast. Now we can unit test it. Yeah, it has a publish and a subscribe. And it's our, once you've created it, you've created it. Cool. No unused fars. Oh, I need to export it. Export default. So my question here is, why is this unit test passing when I said expect it to be truthy? What was it before? I, I can tell what it is now, but... Oh, it's not going to log? It is going to log. Cool. It's a function now. But what was it before? If I don't export it, what in the world did I think it is? Like an object? Yeah, it should be an object. Yeah. It's not logging it. Yeah, it's an object. Yeah. It's an object because... This is just is not using ECMAScript six stuff modules. It's it's using it assumes like there's a there's an object with a default prop on it, and so it gets the object and then it would look for the default prop, because this is it. Jest is going to convert this to something like this. Actually, Jest isn't. Babel is going to do it, and Jest is going to work with Babel to do that. It's going to do this, or it would deconstruct it and then do default create observable like that. We've got it now. What should be it be doing? We, we talked about it a bit ago. This is why I have two sides here. It only exports two things. We really only have to worry about those, but we need to make sure that the subscribers, there wouldn't be anything subscribed. I need to publish a value when all of the subscribers are gone and make sure that nothing hears it. Now the thing is, I wouldn't really have a way to do that, but I don't. It's hard to, it's hard to say. Without giving access to the subscribers ref, outside of create observable, it's difficult to know what's in here. For debugging, it's great to know, but I mean, I don't want to expose those things. I guess I could expose it with like an underscore so that people can know that I can use it for testing purposes. Like this, I can expose it this way. And that way it's unit testable because I can get access to this and verify that there's nothing in there. I'm trying to think of how I would unit test it. So one of the things I need to do is that I need to subscribe to it and then unsubscribe. And then I need to verify that there are no subscribers. Well, unless this is exported here, there's no way to verify that. Next, I need to publish and I need to verify that a subscriber will hear that. Any, all the subscribers that have been subscribed will receive the publishing. So that's another test. And that I can verify. But I, yeah, that I can verify. And then the last thing is that, yeah, I think that's it. It's, I think that's, those are the only tests I need. It should, the very first thing I think is we got to check I was going to say we should check like allowing subscriptions, but we, the, the subscribing, you wouldn't be able to verify it unless you published. But I think we need to first verify unsubscribing. Unsubscribe when unsubscribed. One thing I'm, I've been considering, I'm returning a function here the same way that React would when you're unsubscribing from something. In RxJS, it actually returns an object and you would call dot unsubscribe on the object. But this is going to be a little bit different from that if you're familiar with it. And I don't know if I want it to be exactly the same as that or not. If other things have a dot unsubscribe, then I would definitely want to be, I want to be 100% exactly the same. Because this is looking like React as it is, I don't want that. But I might change it if somebody gives me a good argument. But should unsubscribe when unsubscribed? Perfect. Yes. We are going to do observable equals create observable. That you don't ever pass in anything as far as I know. And so we expect observable to be truthy. Well, we, that doesn't matter. We just need to call the unsubscribe method observable.subscribe. We don't even need to pass it a callback. It doesn't technically care if there's a callback. But if you don't pass one, this won't work. Ah, then that's a bug. I already found it. If you don't pass a callback, a subscriber, it, it will break. I can just put function.prototype as a subscriber. And you might say, what if two people don't pass a, a subscriber when they call subscribe? That's fine, because I'll just remove the first one, then I'll remove the second one. I don't care which one I remove, as long as I remove one. But when you'll call publish, it'll publish on it. Yeah, but the point is that this code won't run properly. I guess I could check to see here if there's not a subscriber, but I'd rather just do a default value and assume that everybody's going to pass a function here. Like, why wouldn't you function, uh, pass a function in your subscription? It wouldn't do anything otherwise. This is the unsubscribe method. Yeah, I feel like there's only two things to test in this. And I, I also feel like I'm missing something. And then we call unsubscribe after we've subscribed. I could, yeah, I guess that's fine. I could just do this, but then nobody would know what I'm doing. Then what else? So this is clearly truthy. What in the world?
Did this not work? So maybe the first thing is that when I create the observable, I, that's a test I didn't even think about. When I create the observable, it should create the observable? Like what? Should create an observable. But I still need to unsubscribe from it though, but I'm not gonna test that. I'm just gonna test that my observable works. But then what about these? It's like still in memory. I haven't cleaned up after myself. I don't, I'll put my expect down here. This should be not truthy, but this should return us a method with two, two things that we actually care about on it. So we should expect that publish is a function and subscribe is a function. I would do like observable.publish is a function. This is internal, so we don't care about it. We only care about it for unit testing. And I guess we could test that it's there for unit testing. We want to care about these that not they're truthy, but they're to be a function. How do you do that in jest? type of function type you could do type of this and type of that and expect to be a function as a string but i bet you just has a way to do it with expect i'm, I'm gonna look here type of function you're not seeing it i'm gonna pull it in so you can see it all right this is me trying to figure this out so this is to mock that's not what i want i don't want the mock thing i want the i have no clue i, I don't know what to do with just when i'm at the docs at this spot this says docs here, but where's the sub docs? Where, where are all the little articles and stuff that I can use to say, hey, I want the expect stuff. Something about a function. Oh man. It's gonna be like to be, something like that. To be defined? No. To be truthy, undefined, to contain, to equal, to match. I just, yeah, I guess I could do type of. That's fine. Just looks weird. Wait, can I do this? Call it like a function and then do this? I mean, I know that works. I just, yeah, that's what I expected. My linting rules would say it, but I don't know what, I don't know what's causing space unary ops to fire. Maybe it's something I did. What if I put a space here? Is it, a, so it's like if it's like writing the word if that's fine. Yeah, that looks weird. I don't like it. Function. Now we check our tests, see if they pass. I want to know which one failed. Oh, and the one form test will get rid of it because we're not using it. It was just there to make it not error. Should create an observable that is false because, yeah, this is really weird because it's like converting the to from XMAS module, it's like converting it to this weird format. Create observable. What's the error here? Type error is not a function. How is this not a function? It is a function. I even logged it earlier and it said it was a function. Like, when I log, log this thing, should create observe, yeah, 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 but it is it a string? This looks like a string to me. This is not a string. Create observable is an object. Interesting. Is it because the import syntax? Is it just something weird I'm doing? Or did I export it wrong? Or did I not save the file? I didn't save the file. All you TypeScript people out there telling me I'm doing something wrong. See, that wasn't the issue. It's just I didn't save it. It's still like passing all the tests. Observable is truthy. We are correct on that. But what I really need to check now is this private. I want to say it's not method though. It's this tri private property of the observable to make sure that observable, this is like leaking the internals. I really don't like this at all. I feel like somebody's gonna use it and break my code. Even though it's me, like I'm the one that's making all this. I, I don't like leaking the internals, but for unit testing, I really need it. Uh, dot length equals zero. Maybe somebody can tell me if I'm doing, like what I can do to fix that. that that's not truthy. This is a, uh, can I get the length of something? There's a way I thought would just to get the length, man. Length, yeah, to have length, yeah. To have length is zero. You don't like it? What's wrong here? At least it's erroring. Match error, value, receive value must have a length property whose value must be in number. How about if I did this, dot current? That should work now, because this is not an array, that is. It still doesn't like me? Receive length one. Oh, hey, my code's broken. Great. Received array function anonymous. That's weird. Oh, because that's the, that's an anonymous function that I passed in here as a subscriber. When I call unsubscribe, it should remove it. Hey, the unit test is working. We actually broke my code. We're actually, we didn't break it. It's already broken because I didn't pass in a subscriber. It should use front function prototype. And this is, should unsubscribe when no subscriber passed. And it should also unsubscribe when there is a subscriber passed. Those are the two different tests there. And we're getting some tests now. But the problem is I still can't figure out why it's not working. Come in, here's your subscribe method. I call it, it adds this into the list that had nothing in it originally. 
Then we get the subscriber index of the one that matches. What if there is no subscriber index or this is this would be negative one, then it would break. But it has to be there because I created it, it should be able to unsubscribe it. I wonder where it puts the logs. Oh, down here, zero. That, that is correct, the index is at zero. Oh, this doesn't work when the index is zero because I start here at zero. I bet you there's a solution to this that I haven't thought about. But this should be sliced, just this piece, if, if it's at zero. I could check if it's zero and then do some other path, but I would prefer to use this path if I can. So now I gotta think about how to fix this. I have written a lot of code like this, and I've not, I feel like I've never run into this issue before, but I have, because I, I remember seeing this issue before. That's why I knew what the problem was. It's including zero, zero is inclusive. If I do negative one, the thing is, it would go to the index, which is zero. Maybe negative one is correct. I wonder what slice negative one does, in fact, because when you put negatives in the slice, I think it goes the opposite direction, something like that. Yeah, let's do this and test it. Thank you for your errors. Array, we have one value in it. I'm gonna just call this um, A, so to differentiate it from the number of the slice minus one, that gives us A. Slice at zero obviously gives us, uh, what about minus one to zero? That works, that does solve the problem. And what about this one? Subscriber index plus one. Let's do slice of the same array. Yes, at um, one. It's also not gonna have it. This should fix the bug that we're having where it, this is minus one, this is zero, and then this is one. It should skip over zero at that point. That's interesting. I wonder what negative one does if you have other values in the array. It just picks the last value. Interesting. If I do that, it's gone. If I do that, it's also gone. I can't use negative one as the first one because that's obviously not consistent. Okay, fine. I'll just, yeah, I, I was, I just wanted to try something cool and it, or clever. I should really say it's clever because it was a bad solution. I just want this. If the index is zero, if subscriber index equals zero and do that, otherwise, bam. And then this is going to be, I need to, Oh, somebody must have caught this earlier. This is why we do unit tests, because I wrote this really fast, and I didn't catch it. It still doesn't work, though. Let me make sure 100%. If I do zero and and zero, it's gone. No, hang on, hang on. Oh, so I don't need the alternate code path. It was just bad code. So I would have made it work for zero and not any others. The good thing is when I do unit tests, I do multiple. So I never just stop at the one. It's just, I'm not to the point where I'm doing multiple unsubscribes. Cause I would have to, that's why we, that's why we made this available. So I could check and verify. And I made it an internal method. Although I, I, I still don't like exposing it. It's really bad. Cool. At this point, this test should be passing. Oh, was this linting error? There's an unexpected something. Oh, that might be why. Yeah, I changed around a bunch of code. Uh, we'll do it. Normally I can see the top and bottom of where these things are, but I can't because it's so big right now. It's like when I code, it's normally like this and I have five columns or six columns. What you're saying is like the very giant screen sharing kind of way of I would be doing this. They both pass, that's expected. Then we want to duplicate this test. And this one is going to be should subscribe. That's going to stay. Sub should sub unsubscribe when a subscriber is passed. I could say a callback, but it is a subscriber. Just the thing is normally in RxJS, the subscriber is, could be a function, but it could also have like next error and complete, but this wouldn't have that. I need to make sure that it called it too, but I don't know. No, I don't need to make sure about that. That's another test. Do I wanna, I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. I could check in this array to see if it's even in there, but if it has zero, length zero, then I don't have to worry about it. And I, I could just pass function prototype here, but the goal is literally to not do that. This looks weird. All right, fine, I'll one, one mine it. No, I'm just gonna do it like this because I'm passing it in weird. But should unsubscribe when a subscriber's passed. Should unsubscribe when no subscriber passed. How about that? And just keep it shorthand. It should create an observable. Yes, it did. Those methods are correct. And then now should, what should it do? It should, when we are calling publish, it should call the subs all subscribers. Should publish to all subscribers. And I will actually subscribe twice now because I need to create two separate observables to make sure that both of them got the message. Now, a unit test could just test one or the other, but I need to make sure that both of them get it. That's why I'm doing it this way. I could for each this, 
I'm making it like very distinct here. I don't want my test to have code in it, but I really could for each of this. I don't want to make two of them. I would have to pass in two callbacks and then I would have to use just FN, the mock function thing to, it's just fine. This is fine. I don't care about this now because we're, well, we should do a test that if you subscribe to two, it unsubscribes from both. We should definitely do that. And then we can do our, our published test. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then that's this. We only care about one of them. They're both the same or, oh, what am I doing? Oh man. <laughs> wow. That was, <clears throat> that was weird. You can create multiple subscribers to the same observable. Why am I creating multiple observables? That's dumb. We need to call both unsubscribes. But I need to actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check that after the first one is gone, that the second one is, is also there. And I want to unsubscribe to them in a different order from when they were subscribed and also make sure that's working. So here it should have one and there it should have zero. I'm going to make another test based on this one. And I'm going to make sure that should unsubscribe from all subscribers out of order that when you swap, this is also wrong. This should be observable. This code is going to error. These need to be swapped and that should fix it. Okay. This one, I said something was wrong here. This needs to be observable. It is. Oh, did I copy the test in the wrong location? Yeah. It's probably because my screen is like just too tall. Should subscribe from all subscribers. Should unsubscribe. I just moved these tests there. I think there's a way to close them all cleanly where just, you're just closing the one you're in, but I don't think I've ever done that. I it's like, I've never learned it. I can do that. That's not going to help though. All right, cool. Let me run those tests. And then the published one is down here, which should fail. Yes. Because I want one sub observable and I could do another one to make sure that each instance is unique, but I don't have, I don't want to test that. It's fine. I'm not defining anything outside of the function. So it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into that situation. Unsubscribe one, unsubscribe two. Yes. Observable is still the same for both. And then now we need a just FN mock function. I need to make sure that both of them got called. And I, is it just FN like this, like that? I think that's how you do it. Uh, mock subscriber one and mock subscriber two. And they're both just functions and they don't need to do anything. They don't need a console log or anything. They don't even, I don't even care what was called, but uh, I do care what it was called, but I don't need to pass anything into them because it's all side effects anyway. Every subscribe is what I would consider a side effect. These are the mocks, and then I need to unsubscribe from both of these at the end of the test. And these need to, I need to verify that these were called with, expect these, I don't need to check the length anymore, thankfully, to have been called with, that's number one, because I do need to publish onto the value at this point in time, right here. I need to do observable.publish and make sure that what I put in here is also what I get out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it an object. I'm gonna say, and normally I put it at the top. I think it makes sense to do it here. Expected value, or is this actual value? This is the actual value. I can just say value, it's fine. Should be not confusing. These obviously are gonna be two different expects. So I expect both of them to have been called with the expected value, which is that. And then I also expect them to have been called once. Duplicated, I guess, to have been called times one. But these, I, I actually don't, I can check the values there first and then check that they've been called once. Aha, zero calls. Hey, great. Expected an object, number of calls zero. It looks like I'm getting two different errors, but I'm not sure because this is green and that is not. Two have been called with expected, yes. It looks like this is failing, but I don't think so. I think this is failing, which is the same as that. But then it says here, number of calls zero. Oh, meaning the function never got called. You can't even check that it, it did that. So maybe I should have put this, maybe I should have put these checks first. The number of times you get called. No, that's what I normally would do. I was trying something different. Obviously it was a bad idea. Did it get called once? No, it got, this makes more sense. This kind of error. Great. Cause it didn't get called. Now that's why we wouldn't even look to see if we have a value. I was thinking it would get called multiple times and that's why I would do that. What's wrong with these? It was never called received number of calls. Let's look at the publish. We passed in a subscriber, which is a just mock. And then in our publish, we look at all of these and we did, hang on. Let's make sure this is, we got the equal sign here. We are concatting it into it, but it's being added. 
And then up here, we are looping through all of them, and we are calling them with the value that was published. Yeah, they are subscribed. I have not called unsubscribed in here until here. What if I get rid of these down here? Just want to see. It shouldn't do anything. I just want to, it was, was a, it's what I would call a sanity check if you do that. I'm making sure that everything works as I expected. You could call me crazy for expecting that to have changed anything in the first place. Why is this? Oh, is it because I'm in the zone? It tells me where I'm in. Oh, that's cool. I should know that, but these plugins change over time. Sometimes I don't. It's like doing this right now should tell me where the beginning and ending are over here, but they're not doing that. It might be because my screen is zoomed in. Yeah, maybe that's what's going on. Or they changed the plugin recently. And I don't know. Here's mock. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Value, observable, publish. And then unsubscribe to both of them. Then we check that they, was call, they were called. I'm checking that this per in particular has been called once. This looks correct because it's not erroring that it's not a mock subscriber or anything. Did I not pass them in? Is that maybe why it didn't work? Is it actually because my test is broken and not my code? <laughs> what did it? There. I think it's all good. I think this is 100% unit tested. We made sure it unsubscribes when you pass a subscriber. When, when I want, I want to redo this. Redo this. When should unsubscribe the subscriber. Yeah. And then should unsubscribe no subscriber. These don't make tests now. These don't make sense now. Should unsubscribe the past subs past in subscribe. I don't like to say past in. Should unsubscribe a subscriber. Should unsubscribe no subscriber. That I guess that's fine. Should unsubscribe from all subscribers. This has from. This doesn't have the preposition. From no subscriber. Should unsubscribe from a subscriber. How about that? And then should unsubscribe from all subscribers out of order when unsubscribed out of order should publish to all subscribers yep this is like the main piece of it all the other stuff is just clean up cool there we go there's our unit test i could make multiple observables and make sure that when you publish on one it doesn't publish on the others but the whole point of having everything in this function means that's not going to happen Somebody would have to take this method and move it out. And you could say, you got to test for that. Is I'm writing this code. And somebody else, yes, they could pick it up. And yes, they could break it. And they could do weird things like that. I don't think they're going to touch this. And this is this is where the money meets the road. When the money meets, I don't know, time. I have a finite amount of time. And this is enough testing for me for this particular piece. There we go. We created an observable and ran tests on it. There's our first piece of one form. Great. And that was a very long video. Next video next video i will start using these observables because i need to start on the next part which is uh, the value observables yes i need to be able to track values on fields and then i need to make fields able to be have values on them they get tracked and all this stuff we'll get there goodbye